She said, yes, she said yes way too fast. Sorry. Not going anywhere, bitch, I'm the host. Your next comment, your next comment came to New Orleans last year for a very small, condensed first run of this festival. He's one of two comics that are the only comics who are returning. And he's here right now. He actually runs the New York Queer Comedy Festival. Hey. Yeah, big shit, huh? Big shit. And he's amazing. I can't wait for you to see him. So I need you guys to sound like a million people once more. Please go to yeah. Quarter and this guy leaned in in just the softest, kindest voice and said, cocaine, cocaine, cocaine. <laughs> it's just nice to be offered, you know? <laughs> I'm used to it. There's something about my overall vibe that says, that dude is probably looking for drugs. <laughs> On some level, it's fair. I will admit, during the shutdown, I smoked so much pot. It was like I wrapped myself in a cocoon of bong smoke, and when I finally came up for air, it was legal. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> legal New York. <laughs> no, I, uh, I I actually quit smoking pot recently. I um, well, I ran out of pot, but story still <laughs> told. I had to, y'all. It's the fucking munchies. Now that I am 40, yes. 30 years old. <laughs> My body does not bounce back from a jar of peanut butter and a sleeve of Oreos like it used to. <laughs> like and I get the munchies real bad. I've got friends that can smoke a joint, eat a handful of almonds, good to go. Meanwhile, I am pulling the couch right up to the refrigerator. <laughs> and it does not stop. I will house a box of Captain Crunch just to kick things off. And it's not over until I have sucked all the duck sauce out of the packets in the junk drawer. And <laughs> Drank all the pickle juice, do not get high with me, I'm a nightmare. <laughs> I miss the good drugs though, I do. Not enough to actually do them, but I miss them. I mean, you gotta realize, there was a time in my life that you could wake me up on my dorm room couch and be like, hey, I found a bottle of pills in McDonald's bathroom, let's see what they do, and I'd be down. <laughs> One pill makes you larger, two pills makes you small, the pills that mother give you don't do anything at all. We all know our nursery rhymes, you know? But... <laughs> Honestly, it's been like 20 years since I've dabbled in the chemical dependency arts, and I don't even like speedy shit. Like, if I'm gonna take something, I want something that's gonna make me melt into a couch. Like a girl from a 90s don't do drugs PSA, like, ah! Which is why I have never tried heroin. Know thyself. I keep that on the proverbial top shelf, but I tell you what, if I ever get a cancer diagnosis, it is fucking on. And <laughs> I'm going to start smoking cigarettes again. And I'm not talking about the vape pinch, you know, those little nicotine-flavored pacifiers that look like the lab rats. Like, no, 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 no. I'm talking about real, unfiltered, Marlboro Man cigarettes the way God intended. <laughs> it's just going to be smokes and smack in the big sea, and that's how I'm going to ride out this garbage life. <laughs> No, I don't do cocaine though. I um, came out a year ago, I did a little cocaine. I, uh, no, 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 I, I didn't mean to. I, I was in a party, somebody offered it to me. I didn't want to be rude, you know? And, and I swear to God, it was the tiniest amount. I mean, just a, like a fun size amount, you know? Just a, just a child's portion, really. And, and it was off to a bad start from the beginning. I had to put my readers on to see the bump of coke. That's a good look, right? So I do this one little bump. All right, it was two. I'm not gonna walk around with one numb nostril like a fucking amateur, all right? So I go home that night and I get into bed. And like an hour later, I spring away, like what the fuck? And I fall out of bed and y'all, I broke my toe, just snapped my big piggy like a twig. <laughs> it still hurts today when I move it. So whenever I find myself making a poor life decision, I just wiggle my cocaine toe. And it, it serves as a reminder. And it's like having Jiminy Cricket right there in the front of my shoe. And he's like, go home, you old fuck. And, uh, and I do. I am getting older. I have a big birthday. I turned 40. Three years ago. It's, uh, 
it's weird getting older, y'all. It just happens like that. Yes. Like one second you're doing normal young people shit, you know? Just normal. Like, I don't know, riding bikes and selling Adderall um, <laughs> to your junior high principal. And the next thing you know, <laughs> the next thing you know, you're purchasing a $400 bottle of anti wrinkle eye cream. And <laughs> I cannot tell you how badly I wish that were a joke. <laughs> did about the eye cream. I got talked into it by the sales gang and, <laughs> and after he rang me up, he said, you are going to love this product. The company guarantees it's going to take four years off your eyes. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's not enough. <laughs> did you hear about Drew? He turned 40, but he has the eyes of a 36 year old. Perfect. I guess that's <laughs> the best I can hope for. And I know you guys are like, Drew, we can't even see your eyes. You wear sunglasses on stage. Exactly. <laughs> it's cheaper than having work done. Listen, here's how it goes. First it's loud shirts, then it's novelty frames. Next I'll be wearing turquoise jewelry. This is the life cycle of the middle-aged man. I don't make the rules. <laughs> When you see me wearing a caftan, you will know that my metamorphosis is complete. <laughs> and it's time to throw me over the Brooklyn Bridge <laughs> and into the East River. No, I'm not scared to get over. You can tell by the receding mohawk. What scares me? <laughs> what scares me is growing old in New York. Because y'all, if you stay there too long, you get fucking weird. Like, it's too late for me. Save yourself. Like, I tell young people all the time, listen. Here's how you do New York. You move there in your 20s, you do a bunch of drugs, you fuck a bunch of strangers, and then get the fuck out! <laughs> like a vampire before sunrise. We're not letting you grow old there. You get fucking weird. Here's an example. The other day I was up on Madison Avenue, just right on the corner of Commerce and Entitlement, and <laughs> this seemingly normal older woman, she's walking towards me, she's pushing a $5,000 stroller. You've seen it. It's the Gucci, um, the uh, the Gucci Goo Goo. And inside, it's a funny joke. Nobody believes me. Inside this Tesla stroller is a Chihuahua. <laughs> so I'm talking about y'all. If I stay there any longer, I'm just gonna be an old woman pushing a stroller with a dog in it. Or is a cat? No. God forbid a child. I mean, there's no telling how far this could go. Obviously, the gays are getting a lot of attention tonight. We have any straight women in the audience? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Our allies, our princesses, keep those hands up. Gays, quit taking photographs with these poor bitches and using it as your profile pic on Grindr. It is fucking weird. It is a hookup app, not a high school yearbook. I don't get it. Like, all hugged up like cheese. If you truly cared about Stephanie, you would not have her smiling face two swipes away from your pup right tank. It's fucking weird. <laughs> Grinder's a mess anyway. I saw a profile the other day that said masculine alpha top, looking for other masculine alpha tops. Why? <laughs> Are you putting together a fantasy football league? Like this just sounds like more than it. He's talking to this other guy. He said, you should probably know that I'm on the spectrum. I said, cool. Are you autistic or bisexual? <laughs> Either way, it's not a deal breaker. I just... <laughs> Want to know which harness to bring? You know, I've always <laughs> love the man with hard hats. <laughs> but we have a complicated relationship, right? Straight men and, or sorry, straight women and gay men. It goes all the way back to high school. We remember, we gaslighted you. We told you we loved you. We gave you the worst sex of your entire life. <laughs> and then we made you hold our hands while we cried gay tears on that pair of crushed velvet jeans that we made you buy. <laughs> you were right, Megan. They looked terrible on you. I wanted them for me. <laughs> we make up for the problem, though, right? We pick out your dress. We do your hair. And then we hold it out of your face while you spew watermelon vodka into that micro-made backpack that we also made you buy. I was putting together a look, Megan. <laughs> What about my bros, my straight dudes? Where you at? Yeah. Oh, listen, I'm an ally. Some of my best friends are straight. I was uh, <laughs> talking to a buddy of mine the other day. He's a bartender, and he had taken a girl on a date. He was getting her back to her, uh, his place. He was like, yeah, dude, we got back to my place, and I'm totally giving it to her, man. I am a fucking power bottom. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro, you know what a power bottom is. I said, I do. <laughs> but walk me through this. <laughs> Power bottom. It's with the dudes on the bottom. I'm like, right. 
and the girls on the top. <clears throat> nope. <laughs> that is just lazy sex. And if I were a better friend, I would have told him, but I kind of want to see how this plays out. <laughs> him going through life, so identifying as a power bottom. <laughs> 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 For me. I am originally from the South. Like I said, I grew up in Alabama. Exactly. Um, <laughs> that same Alabama you've heard so many great things about. <laughs> grew up in Alabama and I was gay at the same time. That's why my pronouns are he, him, and y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird though, now that I'm traveling uh, to do comedy and stuff, I'm, I'm met with like a really hard decision because I meet somebody new and they ask me where I'm from and I have a choice. I can either say Alabama or Manhattan, and both come with a lot of baggage, you know? <laughs> like, it never fails. Anytime I meet somebody, they're like, where are you from? And I say, Alabama. They go, Alabama? I've never said it that way in my entire life. Alabama. They bend over the whole thing. I don't know where the Forrest Gump interpretation is coming in. <laughs> Alabama's not the worst state. It says so right on our license plate. Alabama's not the worst state. <laughs> Or, same thing, I'm traveling, I go somewhere, it's an Uber driver or front desk at a hotel. Uh, where are you from? New York. Oh, like New York City or just New York, New York? I bet you live in Fargo, what difference does it make? <laughs> Challenge my New Yorkiness. It's hard growing up in the South. You know, you're gay, Jewish. We were Jewish, I'm just saying. <laughs> Not ideal. <laughs> Not a lot of Jews in Alabama, it's just wall to wall Baptists. And First Baptists. And Southern Baptists. And snake handlers. And that's what we call religious diversity. You know? I'm actually Catholic. Well, I was Catholic in the recovery, but growing up, we were super Catholic. I mean, every Sunday, every holy day of obligation, Good Friday, Taco Tuesday, we did the whole thing. Uh, I was an altar boy. Y'all know what that is? Yeah. yeah, dudes in the white dresses, the jingle the priest balls, bells. <laughs> I was an altar boy, I was a male cheerleader, and I was a boy scout. It's like my parents were trying to catch a predator, you know? <laughs> Dressing me up in sexy costumes, just bangs. <laughs> Mom may as well just put me in a red dress and said, here's your one chance, fancy, don't let me know. <laughs> I love how well that joke works down here. I mean, it sort of works, it sort of works in New York, but like, not like down here. Because you know, all those other gays, they grew up worshiping Whitney and Britney, but us Southern gays. Come on now. Thanks to Reba. Okay. We just wanted to grow up to be gold digging whores. That's right, fancy. Now I don't remember where I was in the joke. Um, something, 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 the South, I don't fucking know. Um, it's different in the South. It is. I got a call from my mom earlier today, and I uh, answered the phone. And that was the first mistake. And uh, I was like, hey, mom, what's going on? She goes, well, that's Southern. For somebody's dead. It's the only reason this woman ever calls me. She is like the fucking Grim Reaper. I think that she must get up every day and troll the obituaries like Craigslist. <laughs> Just so she can call me up and try to convince me I know somebody I have never met before. She once sent me a death announcement in a birthday card. <laughs> Hope everything's going good up there in New York City. I don't know if you heard, Aunt Adeline died. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> She's like, hey. Do you remember our neighbors, sisters, mamas, cousins, brother? I'm like, no, mom. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. You remember her. She used to work over at the beauty salon, up by the Bait and Tackle shop, over by the Walmart. I'm like, Christ, come on, seriously. I don't know, a whale. She died. <laughs> Fuck. I was just getting to know her, too. <laughs> she will be missed. No, I'm kidding. Mom never calls me. Um, but she will send me a text that's like, this long, looks like Harvard Clinton, takes me all afternoon to interpret y'all. This woman used to teach English. And now she communicates entirely in capital letters and questionable emoji choices. Lunch with Sue, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Winky face, corn on the cob, black eye with his hand in the air. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Who is Sue? <laughs> she 
sent me a text the other day. This is totally true. It said, hey, I mailed you something. Eggplant emoji. <laughs> I know. I mean, at first, I'm like, cool, mom finally gets me. But imagine my disappointment when I went to the mailbox just to find a copy of her recipe for eggplant casserole. <laughs> That she could have just texted me. Yeah. Did y'all know that you can use the eggplant emoji to actually mean eggplant? <laughs> I did not. And now I can't help but wonder, is mama accidentally sexting with the good people of my hometown? <laughs> I heard your wife passed away. I have just what you need. <laughs> Be right over. Eggplant emoji. <laughs> yeah, mom scandalized South Alabama with a famous dick casserole. <laughs> I can never go home again. Follow me at Drew Test here at NYC. Thank you so much. Drew <laughs> Test here, everybody.